Nowadays, everyone wants to drive a motor car. Already, there are over 9 million qualified drivers, and their number is growing every year. These young men are also going to be drivers. But unlike the rest of us, who once we pass the test are left to our own devices, they're going to learn to drive in the police way. And what's so different about that? Well, just that the police drivers, based on individual miles driven, are the safest in the country. And if you think that that means crawling along with arms flapping all the time, have you ever seen a traffic patrol car in full cry? These men may be the cream of the police drivers. It certainly takes at least three years to train them to this pitch. But they use the roads we use, obey the traffic laws we obey, and yet they still remain the safest drivers in the country. Why? Well, the answer is here. In this book, which anyone can buy and read, Roadcraft. And inside the gates of the Metropolitan Police Driving School, where that roadcraft is taught. Here, the embryo drivers go back to school. They learn what makes an engine take over, but more importantly, they learn right from the start the police system of car control on which they base the whole technique of good driving. Thank you to the gearbox. When driving a motor car on the road, we should consider three factors. The first being concentration, which will vary in all of us. Secondly, road observation, which we've outlined in the highway code. And thirdly, our reaction time. The average reaction time is 0.5 of one second, which is equal to 22 feet thinking distance only at 30 miles per hour. Let us now take then our system in car control on the approach to a right-hand turn. Here on the blackboard, I will illustrate the six features which we're going to employ. Our first feature is course. Here on the blackboard... The instructor first explains the correct positioning of the car on the road for the approaching right-hand turn, first looking in the mirror and signalling if necessary. Point number two is a reminder to check with your mirror before breaking the speed for the turn and signalling to anyone behind your intention. Point number three is to select the correct gear appropriate to the hazard ahead. We've now moved to feature four. Again, consult the mirrors and give the directional signal that you are going to turn right. Bring the hand in and supplement it with the traffic. Point number five is to sound your horn if it is necessary, especially at blind corners. Finally, number six, acceleration away from the right-hand turn. It is emphasized how the point at which the car accelerates and the degree of acceleration will vary with changing surfaces and wet or dry road conditions. Before we accelerate away. By complying with the system in car control, as we've just illustrated, the car will always be traveling on the correct position of the road at the correct speed with the correct gear engaged. This life-saving drill may seem complicated at first, but then so do the controls of a car the first time you take over. Right, seat well back, shoulders clear to the top of the seat. Comfortable? And yet, in a remarkably short time, the novice will be doing the lot systematically. So it is with the system of car control. Police drivers practice until it becomes second nature and their reactions to all hazards are automatic. And because quick reactions are essential for safe driving, every police driver is tested regularly on this machine. Right, I want you to push your right foot on the accelerator pedal until the speedo needle is showing 30 miles an hour. Now, if you look at the screen in front of you, when I press this button on the box behind here, you'll see either that picture or that one, or perhaps this one, come on the screen. Now, in a moment, I'm going to press the button again, and when you see that picture on the screen, I want you to transfer your foot from the accelerator pedal onto the brake pedal as fast and as hard as you can. 
Understood? Yeah. Right, watch the screen then. Keep the needle on 13. Any moment now. And your reaction time is 0.375 of a second. At 30 miles now is 16.5 feet. Your reaction time is your thinking distance. It means that at 30 miles an hour, your car will travel on an average 30 feet before you even touch the brake. And if you want to know what that means on the road, just look at this. A stream of cars nose to tail along the whole road. If that driver ahead stamps on his brakes, at 30 miles an hour, you will hit him before you can even touch yours. More than 6,300 accidents happen that way every year. So next time you join the race and crowd the driver ahead, remember your thinking distance, unless you want to go to hospital instead of home. Even more elementary, but just as important in its way, is a good driving position. No lolling around here with one arm on the window, but upright, alert, and comfortable. Mirrors carefully adjusted. Hands at 10 to 2 on the wheel, and the feet in the right position for the pedals. And that, if you pass a traffic patrol car, is how you will see the driver as he drives for hour after hour through the jungle of our roads. For unlike the rest of us, the police driver is never allowed to develop bad habits. If he did, he'd very soon be returned to former duties. Also, unlike the average driver who mugs up the highway code to pass his test and then more or less ignores it, the police drivers are taught to treat it as if it were the law of the road. In fact, Deputy Commander Radford, who has trained so many police drivers, puts it even more strongly. If you study the causes of road accidents, as we do, you will find that every single one could have been avoided if the highway code had been observed. If we all, pedestrians, cyclists and drivers, practiced the highway code from the moment we left our homes, our roads would be the safest in the world, instead of being amongst the most deadly. But no driver can apply the code without road sense, the trained ability to read signs and think ahead. And it's here that we meet the second vital link in the police training system, thinking aloud. One vehicle overtaking me. I'm going to turn right the road junction ahead. Looking in the mirror, one vehicle coming up behind. Moving out signal, moving out after the overtaking car. Mirror, slowing down signal. Breaking the speed down now. Into second gear. Directional signal, the vehicle's behind. Navigator. Easing off of the vehicles approaching, particularly watching the vehicles on the right-hand side of the road. I can now get around quite safely and accelerate in the road junction. Building up the speed now, looking ahead, change of road surface. Every moment you're at the wheel, you have to make decisions. The more instinctive these reactions, the better driver you become. That is why car control and road observation are the keys to the police driving technique. And they work. For instance, here's what happens when a driver doesn't believe in thinking ahead. an accident every few yards. Suppose we count them. Inattentive driver. Over 12,000 accidents every year. Car pulling out from a curb. 2,300. Stopping suddenly. 6,300. Swerving without warning. Over 5,800. Pedestrian crossing. Over 2,500. And the sad thing is that the driver blames everyone but himself. Now let's see what would have happened had he learned to think ahead. I'm travelling in a busy shopping centre with a number of vehicles parked on either side of the road. There's a road junction on the right. One vehicle coming up behind me, one in front. Looking at the vehicles on the near side, a 
particularly for pedestrians who may suddenly step out from vehicles moving away from the curb. There's one vehicle with his wheels turning out. Slowing down signal, braking, hooter, he stopped. Pedestrian crossing ahead, womb with pram entering crossing. Van braking, slowing down signal for the vehicle behind me. Braking the speed down, stopping behind the van. Crossing is now clear, van is moving off. Keeping a reasonable distance behind the van. And away. No fuss and no danger because of perfect car control and because the driver was always thinking ahead. Each driving hazard can be dealt with in the same way. Take two of the most dangerous. How often do we meet this sort of thing? Overtaking on the crown of a hill. Or this, misjudging speed and distance. Between them, they add up to nearly 15,000 accidents a year, many of them fatal. And next time you're tempted, why not try thinking ahead, like the police? A small van in front, mirror, nothing immediately behind. Now I can see a sports car coming up very fast. Hope he isn't going to overtake on the brow of this hill. Good man, he's tucking in behind me. Vehicle's coming towards me on the brow. Now I'm too near to the brow to pass, I'll stay behind the vehicle in front. Holding back, judging speed and distance, waiting for the opportunity to go through and overtake. Into a lower gear, increase the acceleration, closing up now on the vehicle in front, waiting for the opportunity to overtake. I can see the road opening in front of me now. There's a good opportunity coming after the vehicle approaching, moving out signal and overtake immediately after this car. Pick up the acceleration now and overtake with firm acceleration. Ease off the accelerator, move into the near side and allow the sports car to pass. And remember, you will be safe on the road if you are always in the right place, traveling at the right speed, in the right gear and are always thinking ahead as those drivers were. All road problems are first worked out in theory at the police driving school. Drivers are shown what to look for and how to apply the car control system. But if the road surface is wet and deteriorating, we will wait until we reach point A2. A sudden change in road surface which could cause a skid. oil or grease to catch the unwary driver. The slipperiness after a rain shower, each calls for an immediate reaction. And cornering. A model on a blackboard shows the best line of approach round blind corners. Firstly, we must place the car in the correct position on the approach side of the bend. Well into the near side for a right hand bend and just left of the middle of the road for a left hand bend. Secondly, the correct speed to enter the hazard consult in the mirror and if necessary giving a slowing down signal before commencing to brake. Thirdly, the correct gear for the speed. If the first three are correct, the car will be able to take the bend under constant or progressive acceleration whenever road or traffic conditions allow, not rolling round while decelerating nor being wrenched round with the brakes on. And on the road, an instructor shows the way. Out towards the middle to increase the view before a left-hander, close to the near side for the right-hander. And the control system applied to cornering, correct positioning, course selected, right choice of speed, correct gear and brakes before corner, accelerating smoothly round the bend. Never roll round or with the brakes on, because if you do brake on a stiff bend, you will almost certainly skip. A basic cause of all skidding, which results in 11,500 accidents a year, is excessive speed. In fact, skids should never happen on the public highway. But they do, and the police believe in training their drivers how to control them. And so, this game of cops and robbers is an essential part of their training. Whatever the leading car does, the second car has to stay glued to its tail. The road surface of the skid pan may change from wet to dry. It makes no difference. Both drivers practice until they have complete mastery of their cars. And that is the final aim of their training. Mastery of whatever car they drive. Different makes of car have different handling qualities. That's why they have a full stable to practice on, all kept in shining order. And when they take to the road, they do so with the confidence that only thorough training can bring. The model of all this to the everyday driver, 
As head of the Metropolitan Police Traffic Department, Assistant Commissioner John Walden has a word of advice for all of us. Every ordinary driver can learn something from the lessons brought out by this film. If our police drivers are safer on the road than most of you, it is because they're taught to think all the time of what they're doing. Many of you don't. You're thinking about your work, your wives, your shopping. You're often tired, angry, frustrated. And that's when things go wrong. Good driving calls for a clear head and complete concentration. Nothing else will do. Tragedy can come in a split second if you let your mind wander. This is what we try and drum into our own men. I hope that we have convinced you.